Hey guys, so I know that you've probably heard of hitboxes, you've seen them around, you've thought about getting one, and you said, you know what, maybe, maybe hitboxes for me, or rather, you know, I heard hitboxes are cheating, why don't I cheat too? Well, let me tell you, this is cheating. I'm gonna teach you in this video, like, how to move, how to use it, how to make it comfortable, how to make it feel good. And before I do that, I'm gonna talk about the differences between a hitbox and your traditional arcade stick. Why would you choose this with its button sci-fi looking schmiggity board? Why not, why not just pick an arcade stick just like you can have in the arcade caps? Well, there's a few reasons. Number one, let's talk about why it's different. It's got buttons. Whoa, Nally, I know, I just blew your mind. Number two, it has buttons, but most importantly, this button is a 30 millimeter button, while the rest of these buttons are 24 millimeter. Your movement buttons, these four, are actually way closer to these eight than you would find on a normal stick. It allows your hands to like be really tight. Like they're, they're, they're close. Like you can, you can hold hands. How cute. Not only is this button down here bigger, it's also your up button. So, you know, you'd think like, oh yeah, you know, this is, this is up, this is down, this is left, this is right. No, this is your up button. This is your down button. Why is that? When most people see this, they're like, what, what's the point? Why would I ever do that? Well, there's a very important reason. And that's because in fighting games, jumping is a commitment especially in your traditional fighting games like Street Fighter or Uniel or King of Fighters. Uh, anime games, you can generally block in the air, but in those types of games, you cannot block in the air. If you're moving, right? If you're doing this and you go, uh, you'd be jumping. Even if you touch it for just a smidge, you'd be jumping. That's a huge problem, right? By putting it down here, it makes it a commitment. It's, it's an intentional design feature. It's, it's, it's brilliant. This button down here, when you jump, you better press it on purpose because if you don't, you will die. Another important reason, right, is that because of the way it's positioned, you can actually press it with your other hand, which has pretty big uh, implications later, but uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. The last thing I want to talk about is this concept of cheating. What makes a hitbox different? The difference is that you can press left and right at the same time, and you can press down and up at the same time. If I get my, my PS4 pad, you can't actually press up and down at the same time. The D-pad actually physically moves when you press it. And because it physically moves when you press it, you can't press up and down at the same time. For charge characters especially, with most sticks, you actually have the, you know, there's a, there's a physical lever time of going from right to left to right. This is not one frame to do this type of input. On a hitbox, it is one frame. If I want to do a throw sonic boom, which is charge right and then lift and punch, that is one frame, right? This is one frame. Maybe that's a little too deep, but that's kind of why you want to choose this, right? The disadvantage is that if you're uh, blocking, let's say cross up and you see them jump over you and you are holding right to block in the front because you're on the right player side and you want to switch to left, you have to plank your butt. So if you do not go from this to this within one frame, you have an extra period in the middle where you're blocking nothing. Either A, if you press both at the same time, you're not blocking. If you let go before you hit left, you're not blocking. So a lot of times in high octane games, uh, hitboxes can actually have a disadvantage, right? During tournaments, right, where you're nervous or whatever, there will be times when you feel like you blocked a cross up and you didn't because you actually kept on holding this button for three to four frames after. And now you get to play video games. So we're gonna use Dragon Ball as the example. I feel like it's impossible to talk about this without very briefly going over number notation. So you'll see number notation in the, in the, over here, oh, this way, this way, this way, right over there, there he is. The way number notation works is it's the exact same thing as your numpad on your computer. So your numpad has nine buttons on it, seven, eight, nine, four, five, six, one, two, three. Each of those numbers corresponds to the direction. So if you look at your numpad, two, and your numpad is the lowest one, right? So it's down. One is down back, three, down forward, five, is nothing. Five is nothing. You can press nothing for five. Six is forward. Four is back. Seven is up back. Eight is up. And nine is up forward. I'm going to be using number notation sparingly in this video. I know that number notation can be confusing for you. If I ever say a number that you don't know, please refer to, to this little doohickey up there. When you play on a hitbox, do yourself a favor. Don't play like this right? Like play with your wrists all like touching the thing, make little globes. This is really good for your hands, right? To actually, actually lift them off the, the case a little bit. 
Or if you do have to do it, make sure you don't rest your wrist along the sharp edge here. If you rest your wrist here, it'll actually hurt it long term. So I really recommend kind of making little globes. One of my favorite things about hitboxes is that they're way better for your wrist than sticks. They just are, trust me. I can't, I can't describe how much pain I went through playing on D-pad or stick as someone with bad wrists. Hitboxes are, are so good, so good. Enough talking, let's, let's show you how to move. When you play a hitbox, people's first brain exploration is this is up. This is by far the hardest thing to do in this game when you pick up hitbox is to know that thumb is up. Thumb is up, thumb is up, thumb is up. This will take about two to three weeks to get over fully. You will make the mistake for about a day if you if you lab for about four hours, maybe five hours. You'll you'll understand that this is down and this is up. But remember that in fighting games, you think a lot less playing a match than you do actually learning. So you're gonna mess this up a lot. You're gonna make this mistake all the time. And, and to what I say, you know what, be, be patient, right? Like that's that's the way it is. But the way that I think of it, that helps me a lot. Don't think of it as left, up, right, down. Think of this as a row. This part right here is a row of buttons. Just like how on your keyboard, you know, I have a fancy doohickey keyboard, your left, down, and right arrow, or A, S, and D. Your A, S, and D are all actually on the same plane. The up is the one that's weird. Up is a much bigger commitment and a more important thing than down. Down you do all the time. Fighting games, no different, right? Crouch way more than you jump. Don't think of it as up is lower than down. Let yourself think of this as your home row. Just like in typing, this is your home row. This is your special button, your omega jump button, etc., etc. If you want to backdash, uh, same as stick, you press it twice. If you want a forward dash, you press it twice. So, so now here's what makes hitboxes really, really cool. Let's say I want a back dash. I could press this twice, or I could hold back and press forward twice. You can look at the virtual stick on the screen, by the way, to see exactly what I'm doing. So why does that happen? Well, it's because when you're pressing both, you get nothing. But when you release this, you get back. So what Hitbox allows you to do is it actually allows you to do frame-perfect backdashes. If you're pressing this and you let go, this is one frame. This is one frame back. So that means you're only not blocking for one frame. That's it, just one frame. Who gets hit in one frame? I certainly do all the goddamn time. So that's number one. Two, IDs. Instant air dashes, so easy. So normally, right, on a stick, what a lot of people do is they press up and then they press right, right, right? So up, up, right, up, up, right. And even that, that is so much easier than on stick. Like there's no complications, you just do it. So I'm doing, I'm doing up and then right, right, up. But there's an even faster way. And it's so fucking easy, it's so easy, you just, Press these two buttons at the same time, and then you press this button. That's it. That's all you gotta do in your air dash. And you will get the cleanest air dashes every time. Doing doing complicated pro combos is no problem now. One of the biggest advantages of hitbox is that you can actually jump backwards and very quickly air dash. So you actually get very uh, specific distance adjustments when you jump back in air dash, forward in air dash, and up in air dash. And all are, are very, very, very easy. And if you want to super jump it, super jump, right, is, is down up, right? It's da da ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da So if you want to super jump, it's down, and then it's up, right, and that. So it's down, right, two, then it's nine, right? So up, right, and then it's right. Slightly more awkward than ID, but super jump ID is actually a pretty hard motion to do. I think a lot of advanced players take it for granted. Uh, this is much, much easier than a lot of super dash IDs. So yeah, you abuse this. Your movement upgraded to schmoof.
let's get into a little bit of of the buttons the buttons are the whole reason you got a hitbox to begin with right like look at them they're just so beautiful they're just it's there's nothing to it looks like i'm working a space station or something if you're playing a game that only uses four buttons i'm buying this button this button for hitbox users is very 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 painful because when you're playing your pinky actually rests there it's not like a stick where your buttons are so damn spread out that pressing it is a commitment uh you're you will press this button by accident so what i do in dragon ball is i actually use um uh my sparking blast button is here on the bottom right because i can't accidentally press this and this button is actually a fake button so in training mode it's, it's gonna be record but i use it as a as a fake button So I, I make sure that there's nothing ever on this button that impacts gameplay because you will hit it by accident. Trust me, you, you just you just will. Enough about this, Let, let's get into motions. How do you do a fireball? You want to do a fireball? You hold down, then you hold right, and then you let go and you press the button you want. So if you do it like kind of slow, it looks like that, right? Down, down, right, right, let go. Down, down, right, down, right, let go. Down, down, right, right, let go. Down, down, right. So if you do it fast, it looks like that. I'll do it a few more times just so you can see it. You're basically plinking. Uh, plinking is when you press two buttons, one right after the other. You're plinking these two, but you're holding, you're holding this one, right? Because you want to basically like hold this for like slightly more than a frame which in most planks you'll, you'll end up doing that. You don't generally release the same frame that you press unless you're trying. So if, as long as you can plank, right? And you can press two buttons after another, it should sound like a horse galloping. We'll go quarter circle forward every time, no problem. So quarter circle back is the same thing, just in reverse, right? It's down and then it's left and then it's release down and then you press your button. So down, left, Release left, but same thing, right? Exact same thing, you're plinking. And you can see it on the virtual stick on the screen too. You're plinking, but it's it's a very loose plink. It's, it's really easy when you're doing a combo, right? It just looks like that. And when you do these motions, it should really sound like, like a horse galloping. That's how you know you're doing it right. When you hear like, fra, fra, fra. Uh, that means that you're doing it correctly. A lot of times what I'll see people do is, is they'll like be really stiff with it. Like they'll do kind of this thing and it'll work kind of, or like they'll do, right? They'll kind of like, like, oh, I forgot. Uh, just remember, horse. Brum, 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 right? Like a horse. So let's talk DPs. DPs are actually very different and your methodology for doing it will depend on how strict the game is to, to catch DPs. So if you want to do a DP to the right, it's right, and then you actually let go and press down, and then you press right. If you look on the virtual stick, it looks like that, right? It should go from right to down to right, right to down to right, right to down to right, right to down to right. So here's a, here's a problem that a lot of players have. Let's say, let's say I'm go tense, right? And I need to super jump for one of my comps. My BNB requires a super jump off the ground. Okay, well then I'll do my combo. All right, that's what it should look like. But you'll get you'll get this a lot. You'll get this a lot when you first start. You'll get that. You'll get that all the time. Why why would it do that? And the reason why is because you're actually inputting it very incorrectly. When you press down, right? You, you get a straight down input, right? You need to remember that this is actually down as well. This is a big mental barrier for a lot of people. This is down, this is down, and this is down. So when you do that from a straight down position, you'll often get quarter circle forward medium position. And if you have an air quarter circle forward, you get that input a lot. So how do you prevent this, right? The secret is actually to press forward before you press down, right? Not intuitive, not intuitive at all, because when you, but when you do this, you'll never, ever, ever give me the input. So, you press forward, you hold forward, and then you press down up. You will no longer get core circle forward. All 
All right, so I'm gonna show you guys uh, how to do tiger knees. Tiger knees are pretty interesting on Hitbox. First off, what is a tiger knee? A tiger knee is basically when you do a special in the air, uh, one frame off the ground. So that's a tiger knee, right? This DPS is an air move that will not come out on the ground. So what you do is you input it so that it comes out one frame after it leaves the ground. We'll start with quarter circle. You roll a half quarter circle and then you press up and then you do the move. But the one that's most useful to her is her, is her uh, S move, right? So her DPS. When you try to do it, you'll run into a lot of issues. Two methods that I use for tiger knees. One is the patented just fucking do it method is when you just press up and then you do the input, right? You're playing hitbox. You can do that very quickly. You could also use your, your right thumb for this. Generally, when doing TK DP moves, you're doing it in a structured situation. So you can think and say, I'm gonna actually move my right thumb to here to do the input, right? So you could do it like that, where you actually do it all with your left hand, but it's just way easier to do it this way. And why am I doing five uh, close slash before I do that? There's a very good reason why. So if you just do this, right, you kind of don't get it that high off the ground and it's slightly inconsistent. But if you do it like that, you get it frame one off the ground. There's my cat again. Hello. Let's say you want to get a frame one off the ground, right? Well, if you do this, it, it's just not, it's not going to be the same. You're going to whiff it. You're going to miss. You're going to hit it. How do you do it? Well, here's a patented method for you. You hose the original. I'll run through it slowly. You press six, then you press two, then you press three, then you press up, and then you let go of it. Now, I actually let go of my middle finger there. You're actually supposed to hold it. So six, two, three, nine, release. Now, when you're pressing up, you're actually still holding down. But remember that fighting games, if you look on the screen, they translate down and up at the same time as an up motion. So if you do this and you release it, you actually go back to down. So you kind of, you get that additional buffer on the DP input. Because if you hold it, it's, it's not gonna work. It just doesn't come out. But if you just do it and let go, you get it every freaking time, every time. Right? Super consistent. So when a hitbox player begins playing, the motion that a lot of people struggle with is half circles, and it's for a pretty good reason. When you do a fireball right, and you just sort of roll your fingers over two buttons, it's pretty easy. DP, a little bit more complicated, right? But it's just, it's two buttons, it's two buttons. When you start getting three buttons in the mix, your hands become a little bit confused. When you do a half circle, you're actually rolling your finger across three buttons. Now the direct input before I get into the problem is six, three, two, one, four or four, one, two, three, six. You're effectively, if you were a, a, using a fight stick, right? You're rolling the stick from one side to the other along the bottom and then getting the input. So if I were to do it with Biken, it's half circle back. Now, the place where a lot of players get stuck is that they don't know the rhythm for a half circle, right? There's a very specific rhythm you have to do because as you're doing it, you're actually releasing and pressing buttons simultaneously. And it gets a little confusing for a lot of new players that are new to hitbox. So you want to do right, down, right, down, down, left, left. So as you roll, because you're pressing and releasing, you want to make sure that you're holding down two without holding three and without holding one. It actually requires you to let go of both buttons simultaneously. So as you roll your fingers, right, you want it to look like this, almost like you were doing uh, sort of a weird scale on a piano. And what you'll see a lot as you do it is you'll do it too fast, right? And now, now I've been doing half circles on Hitbox for a while, so it might take me a while to, to mess up, but trust me, you, you will get this input a lot. You will get six, three, one, four. And you'll see as I do it, occasionally, you'll see it skip the down input, right? And you'll notice there, it still took it, but the more complicated your input, the more this is gonna fail. And different games have different leniency. KOF, not very lenient on this. Uh, if you're playing a character like Johnny, where you have to do a uh, half circle back, uh, Mistfinder, right? Hold, 
and then dash dash uh, treasure hunt. When you do that in input, there's so many inputs that often if you don't get the down, it just will not work. Same issue in the other direction, right? See there, I'm actually skipping three sometimes. You'll see that as well. The reason why that happens is that you're actually switching from a three to a one input on one frame. And you'll see as I do this, right? You can tell when I'm switching in one game frame because it'll skip the down input. I'm doing it too fast. You actually need to slow down a little bit and take it a little easy. You don't always have time to do that when you're sort of in the middle of a match or when you have to do this on reaction. Like if there's like a, almost a DP or a super input that is like, is like half circle back six, you don't have time to do it, but it, it's important to recognize that you need to slow it down. Now, there's another method too that will get half circles a lot more consistently, but I don't like doing it personally, although I know some players do. So as you begin to roll the half circle, if you press all three buttons simultaneously, you will get the down input because these two, right, is completely neutral and this one is down. So as you roll your hand, and I, I don't do it this way, so you have to excuse me if I mess it up, all right? There, I'm pressing all three buttons. I'm going from six to two, sorry, six to three, to this is two, This all three buttons is two, to one to six. The one version I haven't covered is 360. I actually had to load up a copy of CVS 2. No character that I play in any anime fighting game has a 360 except Tager, and I don't have Blaze Blue installed. How do you 360 on a hitbox? On a stick, it, you just rotate around, right? And it's actually quite easy. So you start at four, and you rotate around, and you end on up, and you press punch. On a hitbox, it's harder because you have to do a half circle, right? Like I described earlier. But then you gotta also carry that into an up and press punch. And a lot of times when people start doing this, they'll get like, like jump punch, right? Instead of a 360. You're doing it too fast and you're missing inputs. So let me, let me do one normal, right? The way I just do it really fast. And it looks like what I'm missing is I'm missing uh, either down forward, forward, or down up. And then straight up, right? So let me slow down. I do back, down back, down, down forward, forward, forward up, and up. So I do four, one, two, three, six, nine, eight. And when you do it with one hand, you, you get kind of like a weird input. So a lot of times you, you don't get it. So what do you do? The same method you do with Tiger Knees. You do it with, with your, uh, your right hand. It just makes things more consistent. It's still not free. 360s will never be free. And in the heat of the moment, if you're blocking and you just want to really quickly punish them, right? It's actually a little bit hard to do it quickly. This is another area where Hitbox has a disadvantage, where I feel like it's a lot easier to do this on offense. Right? Makes sense. Boom, boom. And I'll do it from the other side really quick. So here's the good thing about 360s. If if doing a uh, half circle is more comfortable for you this way than this way, you can do 360s either way. It doesn't matter which way you rotate the, the inputs, right? So even if I'm on this side, right? This is me trying to do it like this. It's not, it's not easy for me. It's actually quite hard. So I just do it the same way on both sides. So let's say you want to do, you know, the ultimate input, right? 720. It is basically the same thing as before, but you're doing it twice. So when you do a 720, you have to do it kind of slow. So if I just mash it out as fast as I can, see how on the left I get really weird, strange inputs? It's because I'm just, I'm just doing it too fast, right? You, you just don't want to do it that fast. You actually want to slow it down quite a bit. There we go. So it's not easy. It really isn't, especially to do it off a jab. Like it's easier off a punch, right? And you might wonder why during this guide, I didn't cover defense. Are you ready? All right, so this is down back and this is back. And this is down back and this is back. And this is down back and this is back and this is down back. And this is back, down back, back, down back.
Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope that video helped you. Uh, if it didn't, please yell at me. If it did, uh, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> if you have any questions, you can reach out in the comments below. If you're interested in the hitbox that I use, I use a Marvelous Custom Hitbox. This is fully compatible with every uh, console there is. It's pretty neat. It's pretty nifty. It looks gorgeous. You can customize the plates. You can customize everything. This is not a sponsored thing. I just really love what they do and, and what they sort of provide. I think that their hitboxes are, are top of the line along with, you know, the other companies that sponsor me. So thank you. Non-sponsored, unsponsored, by the way, products. If you want to get it, check out the link below as well. You can also reach me at twitter.com slash hosiefdc. That's where I'm the most active. And if you haven't already, please uh, give me a subscribe and a like. It's really, really, really appreciated. It helps keep this channel running. An upstart YouTube channel like myself could use all the love it gets. So please, please, please subscribe if you haven't. If you don't want to subscribe, I don't blame you, but please subscribe. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Also, Hitbox, really, really, really good for teabagging.